Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRN AM for Tuesday, June 11th, 2024. And our top story today, keeping your skin safe from the sun. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Dr. Carrie Martin is a dermatologist at the University of Missouri Healthcare. Dr. Martin, it's so great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us in the program this morning. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to talk about skin and skin care a little bit in this uh, in this episode. Summer months are times where we spend a lot of time outside. A lot of us go to the beach or we may go on a boat or we may do a lot of yard work. How important is skin care and maintaining coverage on your skin during the summer months? It's so important. It's really important year round, but that just escalates when your UV index starts to go up. And so as you approach the summer and really even starting in the spring, you know, April and May, it's important to pay attention to what your UV index is and know how to adjust your skin coverage appropriately as you go into especially the summer months where many days our UV indexes are 8, 9, and 10. And, and you, you mentioned the UV index, and I know you are not a weather person, but how do you, how do you find that information? Can you go to, for example, weather.com or your local paper and get that information? Yeah, it's in a lot of the weather apps and also a lot of local news stations will, you know, whatever you watch your news are probably publishing on it as well. But weather apps make it really easy. That's how I check it. It just pops up on my phone every day to let me know. And how, in terms of aging, we cover a lot of things on this network, not just retirement, but we cover aging. How important is, is skincare, face, body, relative to your aging and how you age? It's important in really two big arenas. One is your overall health because your skin health can predispose you to skin cancers, for example, which can have either a, a nuisance effect if it's a relatively easy to care for skin cancer, all the way to a very detrimental effect if it's melanoma or one of the more deadly kinds of skin cancer. So it's important for your health overall, but then it's also important if you're wanting to preserve your skin quality, your skin elasticity, you know, so how your skin looks is also affected by the skin. So preventing sunspots and early wrinkling and things like that is another reason to take care of your skin. And in terms of um, awareness, are, are, you know, people love to go to the beach and, and I have read dozens of articles about uh, more readily, uh, more skin cancers and people that need to get checked. Are people aware? Do they need to do a more, more awareness? Do we need to do more awareness around the importance of skin care and, and staying covered up? I think the awareness has definitely grown over the last maybe two or three decades, but more needs to be done. And I'm not exactly sure what our best ways of doing that are because it also seems that even as awareness grows, behaviors don't necessarily change. Mm -hmm. So even though people are becoming more aware, I believe, of the dangers of chronic sun exposure, it doesn't seem to be changing behaviors much yet. We still are seeing high rates of skin cancer and sun aging of the skin. We're also seeing young people have a lot of sun exposure, including just natural sun exposure, but also still high rates of tanning bed use. So kind of all together, the behaviors are not really changing yet. And, and we live in a, a world where, you know, there's climate changes that occur. The ones get warmer now, maybe the, the sun exposure gets, gets hotter, the UV rays get hotter. This is also probably a concern as well. Yes, and even more so in other parts of the world where the ozone is thinner, specifically over Australia, for example, the UV rays are even more intense. But in general, those changes and those weather changes are affecting us, and we will see the impacts of that over the next several decades as well. And, and last question, I promise, before we go to a commercial break. In terms of, you mentioned that more and more people, uh, especially younger people, being exposed any, any feeling for, uh, based on your practice and what you and the team see, a lot of younger people, when I say younger, anywhere from teenagers, early teens, down to adolescents, are, are they seeing things like, for example, melanoma or, or other uh, issues, diseases, as a result of the skin exposure? Unfortunately so. We are seeing 
melanoma in not a not a higher rate yet in children and adolescents, but definitely seeing those rates increasing a bit in people that are in their 20s and 30s. It does take a little bit of time after you have that higher increased sun exposure for those cancers to develop. It doesn't happen right away, um, but we are seeing those rates go up in people in their young adult years. Yeah. Well, Dr. Martin, as I said, I want to take, I need to take a very quick break and I don't want to, but I need to. When we come back, we're going to talk about prevention. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Dr. Martin, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. Great to be let's, here. Yeah, it's great to have you. Let's let's talk about prevention. So I, yeah, obviously there is an increase and in up, uptick of, of occurrences when it comes to some of these uh, skin-related diseases because of exposure. Um, you know, when I was a kid going out and my mom used to put suntan lotion or I had to put it on, I mean, she, I had to do something, uh, suntan lotion on the face, on the arms. How do we prevent, uh, what do we need to do to prevent these diseases? It's really best to have a multi-layered approach when you're trying to think of how you should take care of your skin in the sun. And the first thing you should do is try and time those activities that you're doing outside, not in the peak hours of the sun. So if you need to do yard work or gardening or things that you could theoretically do kind of any time of the day, do those before 10 a.m. and after 2 or 3 p.m. when the sun's not quite as intense. So that should be your first step. The second step is when you are outside, especially in those peak midday hours, to try and find shade where you can. So if you're going to the beach or you're going to a ball game, take an umbrella, find a shady tree to sit under, find a shade structure. Those are becoming much more prevalent at parks, for example. So find shade, find some sun protection so you're not in the direct rays the whole time you're out. The third level should be sun protective clothing. And this has really gotten a lot better over the last few years. It used to not be very popular or, um, you know, we didn't see it very often where people would wear wide brim hats or long sleeves, but those are becoming much easier to wear, much more available and much less costly. So it's easier to find a sun protective shirt to throw on now, even when you're doing activities that are physically uh, active, like playing tennis or going for a hike or even just going for a walk or a bike ride. By wearing those sun protective clothing fabrics that they have now, they actually keep you cooler instead of hotter, even though you have long sleeves on. And th that sun protective clothing layer is so important because sunscreens sweat off, rub off. You have to remember to reapply them for them to be effective, whereas sun protective clothing just stays put as long as you get it on. And so covering your skin with as much sun protective clothing as you can, including a hat or sunglasses, is really an important step of that whole process. And then the last step is sunscreen. And most people ask me first about sunscreen when they're wondering about their sun protection. But really, I try and educate my patients that it should be the last line of defense. You should do all those other steps first. And then whatever skin is left unprotected, you want to make sure you have sunscreen on. Do, do those of us who are those of us who are follically challenged, myself included, you mentioned hats. Are there any things in particular that we need to be concerned about? A lot of men now and some women shave their heads. Uh, is, is the skin on top of your head a little bit different than the skin, for example, on your face and therefore needs a, a double application, for example, of screen screens or more hats, for example? Yeah, it's going to sweat, you know, scalp sweat, definitely. And when you don't have hair on the top of your head, you're, you have lost a layer of that protection. So it's important to reapply any sunscreens you're using. Uh, on your scalp as well as your face. It's also important when you're picking your hat to make sure it's a broad brimmed hat. We see a lot of pre-cancer changes and skin cancer changes on the tops of ears. 
any, you know, the sun is shining down right on you. And so anything that's on the top part of your body, which includes the top of your head, the top of your ears, your shoulders, those areas are all taking a pretty direct hit. And we see a lot of damage on the tops of ears. So having a broad brim hat as compared to like a baseball cap gives you a lot better coverage and protection. And, and let's talk a little bit in, in terms of prevention. Are, are more people coming to the dermatologist on a regular basis to check, for example, moles, um, other things, lesions, uh, infections on their, on their body as a result of this? It would seem to me that from a preventative point of view, and I bet a lot of insurances cover this, it'd be good to get checked out by a dermatologist such as yourself or another member of the team. Yeah, absolutely. We are quite busy with skin cancer management and prevention and early detection. That We know that the earlier we detect skin cancer, the better people do. And so we are on a mission all the time to try and catch those skin cancers early. A lot of communities will have skin cancer screenings, even at public events. You know, maybe at look at your local farmer's market or other things around your, maybe a recreational center in your communities because sometimes dermatologists will go out into the community to do those skin cancer screenings. Uh, you definitely can check with your primary care provider as well. Some of them are versed and comfortable in doing skin checks. Um, and otherwise, yes, absolutely any dermatology office will be well versed in doing those skin checks. And they're very uh, well covered by insurance typically, and it is a pretty easy exam. It's just a visual exam with some extra tools. The uh, dermatoscope is a tool we use during those skin checks that help us analyze skin changes and moles and things, and then biopsies if needed, if anything looks suspicious. Well, Dr. Martin, we're going to have to leave it there. I really appreciate you joining us this morning, and we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thanks so much. It's been great. That wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to? Drop us a line, and don't forget, for all the latest curated news in lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, then visit our website. We're back again tomorrow with another edition of BRN AM. We'll have some very special guests and another important topic. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving. Don't forget, roll with the changes. <laughs>